Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixel Pad tutorial. We are coding our Fruit Slashers game. And in the last video, we added the bomb and the explosion, right? The bomb takes from us 15 points and the explosion is basically like a splash, uh, but it's an explosion, right? Uh, one thing that I have to change, I don't really have to because as you can see, the explosion works perfectly fine, right? But what I want to change here inside our explosion code is because whenever we create a new animation, we store it inside a variable called splash, right? And this is not really a splash, this is an explosion. So I just want to change this to explosion and I will set the animation on myself, the animation explosion, just so things are better, right? Just so things are more clear. All right, so now it looks better. Our code is working fine and we can keep going with today's class. So in today's video, we are gonna still keep working with the explosion because now we're gonna add a screen shake to our game. So the screen shake is gonna happen whenever we uh, slice a bomb and this is gonna create a explosion and the explosion is gonna also create a screen shake for us. So the screen of our game will like shake a little bit and this is gonna cause more impact to our game. And it's gonna be pretty cool. So here on the explosion, we already have everything set up for us to start doing the screen shake because the screen shake has to start with the explosion, right? And it has to end with the explosion as well. So while the explosion is playing, we are gonna keep shaking the screen, all right. So how can we shake the screen? So here on the start tab, I will create here, uh, not create, but I will use here a function called camera underscore set. So camera set, I'm gonna use to set the position of the camera. So I use brackets and I have to use two numbers here. So zero and zero for now representing X and Y. So this camera set is gonna set my camera's position to these two positions here. So this is the regular position. Zero, zero is where my camera starts. So whenever I press play, so this code here, I'm putting on explosion start, right? So we have to create an explosion to see this happening, but actually we won't see anything because we're not changing anything here. So let me just wait for a bomb here so I can show you that whenever we slice the bomb, nothing changes in our game, right? So uh, that's pretty random. Where's my bomb? Give me a bomb. One, two, three, the next one. Okay, wait, the next one. Finally, there. So we create the explosion, nothing changed in our camera, right? So let's try now uh, adding here for X, a hundred. So we are adding a hundred to the X, right? So it was zero, now it will be a hundred. So let's stop and play the game now. And now we have to wait for another bomb again. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. So I sliced it. And as you can see, the camera moved 100 pixels to the right, right? All my game moved to the left, but that's because my camera moved to the right. And you can see that my slicer is not on the same position as my mouse anymore, right? Actually it is, it's just my camera that is offset a little bit. Right, so uh, with camera set, we can change the position of the camera, right? But we don't want to change the position of the camera just once like this. To create the screen shake, we have to keep setting the position of the camera to different values all the time, right? So the camera will keep like flicking, like shaking around. And whenever the explosion is, is gone, whenever the explosion is done, is finished and it is destroyed from our game, then the camera should go back to the to its main position, right? So if we have to keep changing the camera's position, we're not gonna do it on the start tab because the start tab runs just once. So instead we're gonna do everything here on the loop tab, right? So we have to keep changing the camera, the camera's position, and we have to use always different values, right? Because if I just put here camera set a hundred and a hundred, for example, this is just gonna keep setting my camera's position to that same position again and again and again and again and again, 
So whenever we slice a bomb now, uh, let me wait for another bomb here again. There. So whenever we slice a bomb now, you can see that it moved my screen only 100 pixels right and then 100 pixels up, right? It didn't really keep moving 100 pixels, 100 pixels and 100 pixels. It's just moved to these coordinates, to these positions. So what we want to do, we want to keep setting it to random positions. So then we can never know which are the positions that the camera is going to be set to, right? So the camera will keep shaking. So if we're going to use random positions at the top of this script, we have to say import random. So we can use the random functions, right? So now we can get a random position for X and a random position for Y. And this is going to happen every loop, right? And our explosion needs some time to play its animation, right? And while the animation is playing, it is also going to keep shaking the screen. So first, let's get the random X position. And I will store it in a variable called rand X. So this is going to be my random X position for the camera, right? And this is going to be a random dot uniform. So a random number between. So now I'm going to use minus 10 and 10. So minus 10 is to the left and 10 is to the right. So it will get a random position between minus 10 and 10 and store in my rand x position, right? So here, if I change this 100 for rand x, this should already keep shaking my camera uh, left and right. So here, let me remove this 100 and put it zero. So it's the it doesn't move up or down. So now, as you can see, whenever I slice a bomb, okay, I gotta wait for a bomb again. There we go. Do you see the camera shaking a little bit? Okay, let me increase this value here. So minus, let's say minus 50 and 50. So the bigger the values, the stronger will be your screen shake, right? So here, if I stop and play my game again, there, a bomb, I'll slice it. So see, so the, the camera shaked, right? But only left and right. And another thing that we can see that now our camera is a little bit offset again. So you can see that here we have this black border at the left. And you can also see that my mouse is not on the same position as my uh, slicer again. That's because my camera, whenever my, my explosion was deleted, was destroyed, my camera was still in a different position, right? So before we destroy the camera, we want to reset the camera's position. But first, let's keep going here and let's apply random for the Y as well. So rand Y is going to be a random dot uniform between minus 10 and 10. And I'm going to change this 50 to 10. I don't want it to be that strong, the screen shake. Actually, I'm going to use 15. So it's going to be 15, 15 and for the Y as well, 15 and minus 15. And here my camera set will be set to the random X position and to the random Y position. Okay, and the last thing we got to do uh, is to reset the camera's position once the explosion is destroyed. Otherwise, our camera will be offset a little bit. So we don't want those kind of problems happening. So before I destroy my camera, I want to camera underscore oh before I destroy my explosion I went to I went to camera set uh, so set my camera to the position zero and zero again so here while my explosion is playing while the animation of my explosion is playing I'm getting a random X position and random Y position and setting my camera to those random X and random Y position so my camera will be here will be there will be here will be there will be there will be there, will be there right and whenever my explosion timer is zero uh, that's the time when I have to destroy my explosion. So before I destroy my explosion, I have to reset my camera's position. Otherwise, my camera will be offset. So now we have a fully working camera shake, screen shake. Right. So let me wait for another bomb here so we can see that happening. Uh, too far. There you go. Screen shake. Very cool, right? Another screen shake again. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's working very fine. So if you want your screen shake to be stronger, just make these values here bigger or smaller, right? Smaller for the minus and bigger for the positive. All right, so we have a screen shake in our game now.
So now that we have the screen shake, I want to keep working on our game over room, actually not on the room itself. I want to keep working on the timer that takes us to that room. Because now we cannot really see how long we have to wait uh, to go to the game over room. We don't know if the timer, if the time is getting uh, close to zero or if, or if we still have a lot of time, right? So what I want to do, I want to display the timer on the screen for us. So here we have our punctuation, our score, right? And I'll display the timer here on the right side. So I'm gonna stop my game here. I'm gonna go to the playroom. And here on the playroom, you'll see that we can have a score text, right? By creating a new text. And we can change its font size and we can also change its color, right? And in the loop, what we do with this text is we keep, we keep updating the score text to always be our game score. So I'm gonna be some I'm gonna do something very similar, but instead I'm gonna display my stage timer. Right? So first I'm gonna create a new text here. So I'm gonna say that my game dot uh, timer text is a new text. And this text is gonna say so 60 because it's gonna start saying 60 because our game starts with 60 seconds, right? comma and this is going to be on the position so if minus 600 is for my square text let's try 600 no i'll have to make it a little bit smaller so 550 maybe comma and 350 should be fine so the same y position so they'll be in the same height so you can see that i have my 60 over there i want to make that number a little bit bigger so i can say that my game dot score no not score uh timer text dot font size is gonna be uh if i'm using 70 for the score text i'm gonna use 50 for the timer text and now when i stop and play my game i have my 60 over there but our 60 is not going down yet because we're not updating this text inside the timer text right like we do with the score text. So here on the loop tab, the last thing I have to do, I have to keep updating my timer text like I do here with the score text. So I can say that my game dot timer text uh, dot text is my game dot stage timer. So the text inside my timer text is gonna be the same as my stage timer. But you can see that now whenever I press play, we can see a different number there. Uh, it's not 300, actually. Uh, let me bring this number a little bit more to the left so we can see the whole number. So I'm gonna, oh, not here. I'm gonna put here 500 just so we can see the whole number. But it's showing for us 3,400, 3,300, right? And if you can see that when, whenever I press play, it starts on 3,600 and it starts counting down, right? That's because our timer, is measured on milliseconds and not on seconds, right? So it is 3,600 instead of 60. It should be 60 to show the seconds, right? But instead it's showing the, the milliseconds, that's why it's showing us 2,400 and so on. So to transform this uh, game.stageTimer into uh, seconds, we just have to divide this value here for 60. So think with me, whenever we have to set our stage timer, we have to say 60 times the amount of seconds we want, right? So if we want one second, so it's 60 times one, that is 60, right? If I want two seconds, 60 times two, so that is 120, right? So let's think on the other way around. If we have 3,600 and we divide it by 60, then we have 60, that is 60 seconds, right? If we have here 120, oops, 120, and divide it by 60, then we have two, that is two seconds, right? So to display this value here as seconds, we just have to divide it by 60. So here on the game, timer text dot text equals stage timer, I don't want to display my stage timer the way it is. I want to display my stage timer divided by 60, all right? 
Now let's see how it looks like if I press play. Now you can see that it kind of works, right? It's showing 59, 58, 57, right? It is showing for us our timer as seconds, but it's also showing the rest there, right? The rest of the numbers there. That's because whenever we divide it by 60, we are allowed to get float numbers like this with 40 point something, 39 point something, right? So if I don't want to have that, I just have to surround this with int brackets and I surround it with brackets. So I will transform whatever this number is to an integer number, right? Now we get read of that point whatever. And if I stop and play the game, now you can see that I only have my seconds over there. And I can drag my score a little bit to the right again, my score, no, my, my timer. So I'm gonna go here on the play start tab and I'm gonna change this back to 550. And now as you can see, stop play, we have our timer working perfectly, perfectly fine, right? All right, so now that we have the screen shake working and our timer being displayed, on the game as seconds, you can press save on your game and we will keep going on the next video. See ya, bye.